Hey guys, Tony here. Welcome back to another video. This one's going to be about repurposing your setup instead of selling it when you decide to upgrade. As you may know, I have been going through an upgrade process where I'm going to the Crix MX-10 wall of sound as well as upgrading all of my in-ceiling and in-wall speakers as well, which left me with a bunch of speakers and a receiver that pretty much had no home. So I'm going to cover off what I did with that gear. Did I sell it? Did I repurpose it? Coming right up in the video. So long story short, I decided to repurpose all my gear because it was only just over a year old and I was going to lose a lot of money if I decided to sell it. Clips in Australia isn't cheap. I know you get it pretty affordably over in the United States, but in Australia we pay a lot to get them. So I didn't relish the thought of actually selling all the gear. So what I did is I decided to move all of the gear from the home theater and repurpose it in my living room. Of course, I had to get it past the wife first, which she did. Um, after some convincing, she said, yep, go for it. So what I've done is I've moved all the gear in and that included all the speakers and the receiver and getting the electricians to cut some holes, run the speaker wire for the Atmos setup. So what I'll do is I'll just go through the setup for you guys so that you can see what we're working with. So up front, we have the Klipsch RP 250C center channel. This is a two-way speaker. It has two five and a quarter inch ceramic woofers and a one inch hybrid Tratrix horn that Klipsch is known for. It produces great vocals and it fills the room quite nicely and the room is quite big. So moving along from that we have the Klipsch RP150Ms which I also put onto some speaker stands which I purchased from VFM Audio up in Queensland. I am not sponsored by those guys but I've bought a few things from them now so I will leave links down below if you're interested in checking out their gear. So the RP150Ms make a really good sound for the size that they are. They are my favorite speaker from this setup and it was one of the reasons why I didn't really want to part with them. So I'm really glad that I was able to repurpose them. They fill the space really well as well even though this is a big room it's about nine meters by about four and a half meters so it's not a small room by any means so it does fill the space quite well So moving to the subwoofers, the subwoofers that I've got are the Klipsch R12 SWIs, which are a wireless 12 inch sub from Klipsch. And I'm going to say they do fill this space well with bass, not as good as when it was in my dedicated space because it's very hard to pressurize a room that has no side walls. So I do have to have them turned up to really give you that rumble and the thud that you, I was feeling when I was in this room. But for the purposes of being able to use them versus not having them, I'm really happy that I've got them. So I have two of them and they're wireless, so I don't need to run cables to them. I just need to give them power. So moving along to the Atmos speakers, and this will bring me to a point that I need to make. And that is if you're building a dedicated room, you do have more flexibility with speaker placement because generally speaking in a dedicated room, you're going to have four walls, meaning you can put the speakers in the ideal and optimum positions to meet the standards of say Dolby Atmos or DTSX or any of the other sound formats. But when you're in a living room, you do have to compromise a little bit because it is a general purpose area. In the case of my living room, I do not have a wall because it's open plan going into a kitchen and a dining area, as well as the wall on the other side is a wall of glass. So I have my pool on the other side and therefore I couldn't put an ear level speaker there. So what I had to do is I'd have six height speakers. So once they were installed, I had to choose in which way I'd like to use them. So the speakers that I've got are the Klipsch CDT 2650C version twos, and they have an aimable driver and tweeter. So you can shift the, the, the driver, you can shift it by about an inch and the tweeter you can move just a little bit more. And I have the, both of those aimed to the main listening position or generally where I like to sit. So what I did is I used the first row as my height ones, left and right. I used the middle row as my side surround channel. So I have that, those two speakers are plugged into the side surrounds on my receiver. And then the last row of speakers I'm using as height too. So is it textbook? Absolutely not. Does it still sound great? Yes, absolutely, it sounds great. When I was watching The Mandalorian, that was my favorite test because in episode one, my favorite scene when he's with the robot bounty hunter and they're trying to um, find baby Yoda, 
that scene, there's a lot of blaster fire happening and I was really impressed with how the sound traveled around the room. I still can't believe I have Dolby Atmos in my living room and this was something that I wouldn't have had if I decided to sell all my speakers. So bear that in mind, when you're up for an upgrade, can you repurpose your gear in another room. So the receiver that I'm going with is the Pioneer VSX LX503, which is a 9.2 powered and 11.2 channel process. It was over 3000 Australian dollars and I didn't really like the idea of selling that and losing all that money. So it was perfect. I can't go with a 7.2.4 setup because I have no side or rear space to put speakers. So this receiver is more than adequate to power that setup. So again, that brings me to the other issue is I can't put rear surrounds. So this setup is technically a 5.2.4 in terms of where I have speakers plugged in. It's really only got three E-level speakers. The rest are all height speakers and the subwoofers. It does produce the soundtracks in the way that, you know, it's meant to be processed in terms of outputting to the correct speakers. It doesn't have E-level on the side or the rear. Honestly, it doesn't detract too much from the experience because as I said before, I was running off a 2.1 channel Sony soundbar and subwoofer. So this setup is heads and shoulders, knocks it out of the park compared to what I had before. I do have a Sony 4K TV from 2019 model. We got a really good deal on this TV, brand new, because we bought a few other things when we were furnishing the house. So it's a great TV and I'm very happy with it. And yeah, it pairs nicely. So I have a complete setup in my living room. There are a few things that I still need to do. I've got to finish doing the cabling. I've got to cut some of the cables that I've got running that are coming through the brush plate. I actually got to terminate them into wall plates, as well as I've got to finish fixing all of the speaker covers that I've got for the rest of them because they were in a black room. So I had them painted black. They're going into a room with white ceilings. So I managed to scuff one back and repaint it and it turned out pretty well. So now I've just got to do the other five. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on repurposing versus selling. I know there's a lot of cases where you need to sell because you need to fund the next project as well as you don't have a place for it. But all of you guys out there that are interested in building a sort of theater in your living room, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button for me and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to join me on my home theater journey. Righto guys, that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.